What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mud. Welcome back to my How to Paint a Saber Tusk video series. Here you can see we finished our Saber Tusk, gave it a nice amount of detailed highlighting. So, this is how we did it we use XV88, Mechanicus Standard Gray, Incubi Darkness. Just dropped my Avril and Sunset. Avril and Sunset. Abaddon Black. Seraphim Sepia. Ushapti Bone. Pallid Witch Flesh. And Blood for the Blood God. So, I hope you guys enjoy. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Latest players. Hey you guys, welcome back. Here is our Saber Tusk ready for more painting. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take XV88 and we're just gonna highlight up, highlight back up the skin tones that got a little bit dark because of the shading. So, I'm going to start by looking at all of the prominent areas of muscles, musculature. This guy's musculature that we can highlight back up. Using short strokes like this, you're able to feather the paint out. And we're just looking for areas like the where the muscles bulge the most. Hope you guys all had a good Easter. I spent it eating way too much food. I guess that's what holidays are for with your family. Remember, if you feel like you make any mistakes, then just go back with your seraphim sepia and paint back over. Shade it one more time. That's the good thing about seraphim sepia is that it's not as dark as Agrax Earth Shade, so it gives you a little bit more playing room. Okay, so I got the ribs here. Also highlighted that up right here on the back. That's kind of what I've got going on on this side. Just gonna kind of do the same thing on this side. So me and the lady boss are into film. Where we like watching movies and we're 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 into that a lot. So we've been trying to catch up on the movies from Oscar season that we've missed. So we just watched the other night, we watched Dallas Buyers Club and Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> good films, good stuff. I've been doing my Matthew McConaughey impression for her. Well, not really for her, I would just say around her. It's just been annoying the heck out of her. You're talking like Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. Poor Leo. Anyways. Hey, 
So let's talk about something you guys would be interested in a little bit more. These um, saber tusks, I've been reading more on the tactics on how you would use them if you are an Ogre Kingdoms player. And yeah, I'm surprised I don't see them in more lists. The way you can kind of use them to really just harry the opponent's backfield is just seems like pretty smart to me. I guess with ogres, you gotta consolidate a lot of your points into the, the, the troops, the big guys, but having at least three of these guys running around the table is, I think it's sound strategy for anybody. They seem to be pretty cheap and not many lists I've seen lately contain Noblars in them. So, I don't know, something to think about. They're easy to paint. They're they're fun to paint. It's like you're painting a big, you know, lion. Um, just feels like it would be a shame not to include them in your list. All right. Next thing, any hair, like on the main, we're gonna paint with Mechanicus Standard Gray. Paint is a bad word, let's say highlight. So what I'm doing is I've got the paint right here on the, the tip of my brush, and I'm gonna look for the ends of the fur, not necessarily the roots, looking for the ends, and I'm gonna just lightly brush my feather out in that, or feather my brush out in that direction. I'm not starting from the base, and I'm not painting, holding it the right side up. I'm kind of doing this action here. What that does is it gets the, the paint only on the tips. It's like we're frosting the tips, and that creates a more pleasing picture for the eye because that leaves the darker areas, all that black, in the, sh uh, the the lower recesses as a shadow. It's like the, the poor man's way of, of highlighting. Okay, here on the ends, on the tail though, I'm starting it a little bit lower because the tail is long, and so I want to show some some of that length with the with a longer brush stroke starting from the center. But here at the bottom with the little fur on his on his socks, we're going again at the tips. Next we're taking Inky by Darkness and we're going to highlight the teeth, claws, and yeah, fangs. Or rather just the, the talons. Not, not the teeth, I'm sorry. The teeth are going to be ivory. So we're going to take that Incubi Darkness. And the reason why we're using this is because it's a little bit dark... It's dark greenish blue. And so that is going to highlight really nicely, almost like... Like obsidian. Rather than... If we were to use gray, the tricky thing about using gray is that it wouldn't look, it, it gives it a different look and I feel highlighting black with blue is better if you want a very hard surface, hard looking surface. We did gray for the hair and I think blue for the, the feet, that's going to look a little bit better. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm going to take some Rackarth flesh. If you mess up and you want to clean, clean your models. Do I have any? Where's my Rackarth flesh? Here you are, master. Oh, thank you, Igor. The scholar and the gentleman. I have no idea what that means. I just operate the camera and get you the paints you want. It's an expression, Igor. But what does it mean? I don't want to be a gentleman or a scholar. It basically means that you are smart and you are well-mannered. 
Oh. Well, I guess that's all right then. Okay, now we're going to take Ushati bone. And the Ushati bone is going to be for any teeth or uh, otherwise ivory ivory bits like any of these bone pieces. <laughs> Alright, so another pro tip, or at least uh, intermediate, maybe not pro, is that when you're painting teeth, because they're long, we want to show the vertical kind of lines. So we're going to kind of highlight from the top down and we're not painting horizontally, we're making sure our brush strokes go vertically. <clears throat> okay, and it gets tricky when you get to these little teeth in the center because they're they're short. So again, we're gonna start from the ends. And also if you have too much paint on your brush, that, that might be something you wanna think about. And we're just painting up a little bit. Oh, they are terrible. Mold line right on his nose. Poor Wolfie or Saber Tusky. Okay, Ushati Bone. Yeah, great, great color. Um, but the highest color that we're going to highlight with is Pallid Witch Flesh, which is an almost white kind of really light cream color. And this is gonna go just for the top part of the teeth. So what you can see I'm doing is I'm taking my cork with the with the blue tack on it, the poster tack, and I'm turning it upside down so I can hold it while I am doing these vertical lines. And you see if you just do the ends, it might be tempting to do the entire piece of, or the entire tooth, but you just want to do the edges, the point and the bottom rim here because the lightest part is actually drawing the eye so that the eye can kind of discern the point of the teeth. If you do the whole tooth, then the eye is not going to be sure what it's looking at. So just want to get the top part of the teeth. Right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take Averlin Sunset and we are going to dot the eyes, so to speak. Oh, don't get it. It's an expression again, Igor. You like expressions, don't you, master? You know when they say cross the T's and dot the I's? No. It's for, you know, when you're writing things. Writing? I don't do no writing, master. All I do is, yeah, I know, operate the camera and get me the paints I need. All right, so once you get your yellow on the area, we're gonna kind of paint back around it. So we're gonna take our Abaddon Black and we're going to, first thing is paint around the eye, anything that we got yellow in the eye socket that we don't want to be yellow. And if you paint above in the eye socket too, it'll kind of help you make a angry look, like he's furrowing his brow. Then you're going to take the tip of your brush and you're just going to make a little vertical line towards the front. As if he's looking forward. Oh, 
I don't know why my hands are all shaky today. It's because I haven't eaten that much. Yeah, my hands are really shaky, so I might get something to eat before before I, I mess up all over the place. So let's zoom in. You can see when you highlight the skin this way that it shows the recesses, like in the in the ribs, really nicely. Let's see if I can find my seraphim sepia, and we'll do some. Do a little bit of of, sh of shading, final shading, before we finish here. All right, seraphim sepia. This is the last part we're gonna do. We're just gonna do some selective shading. So we know that the shot. We know kind of where the shadows are, like right here under the foreleg, right? So we're gonna just kind of emphasize that. When you're doing a second shade like this. You just want to emphasize the parts that you've already shaded, that you haven't re-highlighted. And if you have Lamy and Medium, this is also a pretty good product to use because it thins down the shade a little bit. But you don't really need it. I find that just using a minimum amount and and being very kind of careful with it is just fine. So here in the front we know that is back up a little bit. This neckline should be nice and dark because it's in shadow. Same thing here on the opposite end. We're basically just trying to make sure that the highlighting isn't too stark. It's not creating like extra stripes, false stripes. Okay. Here you go. Very, very last bit we're gonna do is blood for the blood god. It's a technical paint. If you don't wanna use this, I also highly, highly recommend Tamiya Clear Red. So all we're going to do is paint on the side and drag down little little bits of blood. When you're doing gore, less is more. If you spatter it all over, then uh, unfortunately it's going to kind of ruin the effect that you're going for. But if you're just painting it and streaking it down a little bit like this, then it looks, it kind of gives you the effect that you want. Ta-da! I still think that might be actually a little bit too much gore, but yeah, what are you gonna do? The reason why I'm using Blood for the Blood God is because I want to give the impression that this is a piercing that the hunter might have done just before battle. So Blood for the Blood God is, it dries really bright, glossy, which is what makes it look like blood, but a little bit bright. So if you want to have like a congealed, coagulated blood effect, then again, to me a clear red is the way to go. And there you have it. Thanks for watching, players, and we'll see you in the next video.